You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. To Bridges with your host, Dr. Paul. From the studies of traditional and alternative methods in martial arts, natural sciences, to further his knowledge of the holistic sciences, author Dr. Paul is here to help promote clarity and understanding and to help facilitate making informed decisions. You learn to trust yourself, opening you up to a new world of connection, relationships, and care. So please welcome the host of Bridges, Dr. Paul Dyer. Welcome back to another week of Bridges. When I'm your host, Dr. Paul, you listen to the BBM Global Network. You can always catch us here every Monday at 8 p.m. And I hope your listeners are catching it well. And if not, you can always catch the podcast that comes out of the iHeart and iTunes Radio and the BBM Global Network. Great week, everyone. Have have a help and self safe week because there's things that we're going to always talk about. Again, Bridges is supposed to get you from here to there. And for those of you not um, used to listening to the show, welcome to the show. And I always like to associate it with a human rights. And human rights today is number 16. There's marriage and family. Now, with the human rights point I like to make with marriage and family, I also like to associate each show with a bridge. And today's show is the peace bridge that goes from New York to Canada. It goes to the Buffalo area, if you're not familiar with it. But it's an international bridge that connects the United States with the rest of the world. And my first guest is coming from the Canadian area. Raphael, come on in. Yes, thank you so much for having me, doctor. It's a pleasure. How are we, how are you doing? We're doing great. We're going to jump right into what we want to talk about because the show is going to be pretty busy today. And I uh, and the and you're the founder of an organization, and it's the Federal Association for the Acknowledgement of Visual, of Visual Minorities. Now, you started that, and you're also a political advocate up in Canada. That's correct, right? Yes, indeed. So, uh, one, I want you to introduce yourself to the BBM Global Network and the Bridges. Yes, thank you so much. Again, it's a great honor to be here today. Good topic, and uh, congratulations for the good job you're doing. And it's uh, very important to uh, bridge building across the globe. And part of my success in establishing this organization since 2002 uh, is building up a network of like-minded individuals, not only here in Canada, but it, with our neighbors in the uh, in the U.S. and around the world. So, uh, for the most part, the association began back in uh, 2002, and after I read a report about uh, marginalized groups and minorities, mm-hmm. and I decided to search and see you know what institution is there because that was the, the report did present a very clear uh, picture of the situation of minorities social economically social politically then after my research i realized there was no institution that stood up to advocate for these groups marginalized groups so we begin in 2002 and now, 16 years later, it has become one of the uh, one of the greatest organizations standing up for minorities, and we've been building bridges across the globe about situation whereas entrepreneurship, youth, health, employment, education, you name it, 
then throughout this organization, I realized that in order to have, you know, effective change, there is the uh, political arena. And that's, that's where right. parliamentarians, yeah. right. And that's where, you know, they need to pass legislation that can help secure minority rights. For example, we had Martin Luther King, his advocacy brought the U.S. to pass a Civil Rights Act of 1962. So that, I was inspired by the uh, Civil Rights Act of the U.S. And I did interact with a few NAACP leaders, as a matter yeah. of fact. That's how we got a hold of first- that's that's how mm-hmm. actually so we ahead. got a hold of got a hold of each other because the NAACP. Now, Raphael, before you get into that, there was do the reports uh, again. See, bridges mm-hmm. is a lot of people understand that there's disparity and in, in, in bridging the gap between this and that. But what was the one thing about the report that really stood out to you to you that you were like, oh, this has got to stop? What was those numbers? The number was the unemployment. They were yeah. hardly finding jobs, and some of them were racially profiled, and a lot of the minorities were, you know, you live in a country where you have a minority population, but they were in majority in prison. Yes. And the lack of education, the financial, the health, everything you could name. So I said to myself, my goodness, you know, it's uh, uh, some somebody got to do something about this. So, so now that you started the organization and it's been going since 2002, what what is the numbers has changed? What did you really have to lock into? Did you have to bring more people on board or did you go out and beat the streets yourself and say, um, this is what we need to do to bring change these numbers around so we can change the value of our country and our culture? Well, at first, I did, I conducted a huge campaign to bring, you know, strategic people on board, and that was done successfully. And by doing so, we were able to, I got a a good chunk of advice as to how to proceed. And right now we do have legislative project that we're pushing through parliament. And I can say it's not the last frontier, but currently we also we are also registered as a federal government and provincial government lobbyist, which put us in a position to push forward for legislation. So up until that point, we're almost there. You know, it's... Uh, those type of mission takes time, but we've we've gone a long way. So now we're at that point where we're pushing for legislation, which is huge, which is a huge step. Is it is it you know here in the United States and just like anywhere around the world? And I want to let people know you're listening to Bridges, and I'm your host, Doctor Paul. And we have our a guest on from Canada. His name is Rafael Luis, and he has a founder of. Just, just economic change, and uh, it there's an acronym to it, and it's uh, the F A A um, V M. So yeah. we we along with any organization, and doesn't matter if it's nonprofit, government. What is some of the things that people had to realize and change that you you didn't have to change their mind, but what did you have to educate them to understand? Like, okay, this is a problem. Mm-hmm. Well, exactly, because, you know, when you have groups in societies that are deprived of their economic or political rights, they're not able to contribute to society. And how do these groups survive? You know, they have to put food on their tables. I'm not saying if they, you know, engage themselves in illegal activities i'm not you know condoning that but i'm not condemning they have to survive so once you have a group that is marginalized deprived of their rights and unable to fully participate in the social economic life of their country you know how do you set them up to succeed 
You know, we're, we're going to talk about how do you set someone up to succeed. We're getting ready to come back from a break, and you listen to Bridges on the BBM Global Network. And remember, the each show is named after a bridge, and today's bridge is the Peace Bridge. And each human rights that we try to advocate for on every show, and today is marriage and family. And marriage and family is about unity. Marriage and family is all types of family, international family, and then global family. So we'll be right back and listen to Bridges on the BBM Global Network. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, Every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage, that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Welcome back to Bridges, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. And on Bridges, we'd like to get you from here to there. Get your your understanding connected to your knowledge. Get your knowledge connected to an action. Because until you truly understand something and really soak it in, then you can perform an action. And that's what Raphael did, Raphael Luis out of Canada. And you're, he realized there was a problem. And he started his foundation and he started his organization and now it's gone global about economic change for minorities. Now, when you say when we say minorities, you're not just talking about um, a certain type of people or you're just talking about all people that gets misrepresented. Is that correct, Raphael? Yes, that is correct. And the the term minorities here in Canada officially is they call us visible minorities. So it referred to anyone that is non Caucasian. Like if you if you're Hispanic or African American or Afro descent or Latinos or any you know, any non Caucasian is described as minorities in Canada. Now, when you talk about economic um, disadvantages, you know, with some people in the United States, and you hear this a lot in conversations with communications with people, and I, I like to listen to all people. They're like, well, why can't they just work harder on getting a job? Why can't they just work harder on being educated? Why can't they just work harder or staying out of prison? So what is some of that myth that we that can be cleared up? Well, firstly, in any societies, when you have groups that are vulnerable and that, you know, if you're driving a nice vehicle, you get stopped by the police. If you apply for a job, you don't have a reference. You don't have the uh, education. And even though when you apply for a job, sometimes they do background check and credit check and all of those obstacles some other groups don't have. I mean, you, you, you take into consideration the high rate of unemployment through my the report I read, the higher rate of unemployment against those groups. 
And it's not that they're not prepared, they're not educated. It's the fact that they don't have access to proper education, proper credit, and so on and so forth. And that put them in a vulnerable position and and disadvantage. And, of course, the measures, uh, certain measures must be taken in order not only to reduce those barriers, but also to protect the, the fundamental rights, because we, we, like we saw in South Africa, when Mandela yeah. fought for apartheid, it's yes. a similar situation. The only difference is that we don't fight, we don't, you know, do riots and so on and so forth. But, you know, it's a similar situation in South Africa. Well, it's a similar situation everywhere. I mean, it, it's just literally everywhere. And this is why I reached out to you and we've been talking for a while and, and we've developed that friendship. And it is a global situation. And I and I want everyone on the bridges and the BBM Global Network to understand that this is not just happening just in your neighborhood or in your community. It is happening all over the world. And if we, as a unity of people, don't pull together and start putting together a, a an emotional action – a physical action and a mental action, nothing is going to get better. So what are some of the things that Parliament is helping you with? And is it tough to get a bill passed in Parliament? It's um, it's not tough to get a bill passed. It's just that, you know, it, it takes uh, – you. we need a good lawyer. And part of uh, getting that legislation passed is – hire the right people. So right now I'm generating funds, you know, to be able to get a good lawyer on our side to help introduce the uh, motion in parliament. So it's, uh, it's just a matter of time. But it, like you said, it, it was a good, good outreach program. I had people from the U.S. Uh, giving good advice, people in France, everywhere that is, you know, familiar with that kind of a situation to pull together in solidarity and that gave me the uh, you know motivational ground I needed to build my momentum to move forward and to encourage but right now it's just a matter of raising the necessary financial resource as you know to get a good lawyer and to push that legislation forward just a final leap <laughs> Raphael, one of the things, do you get th- death threats or do you get um, people try to harm you because of the work you're trying to do? Well, you do get some intimidation, of course, but it's not violent because the, uh, here the Canadian context is uh, different. Uh, uh, thanks God, it's a more peaceful society. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, my actions are nonviolent. Um, so it, I, 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 I implore Martin Luther King, nonviolence. So I, I'm completely nonviolent. And, you know, that eliminates the element of potential threat I may receive because of my nonviolence. And it's, it takes more time, but, of course, it's, uh, it's a better path, I think, to uh, to to have a non-violent approach, no riots, no you know no uh, violence on the streets and stuff like that. But you know it it's less than other places because we live in a more peaceful context here in Canada, which is helpful. So that yes, it is. kind of reduce the kind of threats, you know. So you're listening to the BBM Global Network, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. And again, I want to remind you that you can always call in to, if you have a question for Raphael or for the show at 877-475-8570. And again, the show is about bridging your understanding to your knowledge and your knowledge, your understanding and into action. Because with that, that's the only way we are going to promote a peaceful action a change. You know, one of the things, every time I think of a change, I think of that old oldish Redding song, A Change Is Gonna Come. And that really sings out to me when I'm listening to that song and then it makes me cry. So just also know a change is gonna come, but we need your help to do it. You listen to Bridges on the BBM Global Network.
Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki Energy Healing, or Hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. 209-326-1380. Welcome back to Bridges, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. And again, we're here every Monday at 8 p.m., and thank everyone for listening, and thank everyone for giving me the emails uh, throughout the week for the show, or the, if people have my number, they text me. Again, we're talking about the marriage and family. What is marriage? What is family? To me, it's a unity. It's not just about a man and a wife or whatever union you have, but it's a unity. And family is about unity. And the only way we can build a unity is if we understand each other and if we work hard on building that. And the way we build that and connect those pieces, again, is those bridges. And today's bridge is the peace bridge. And we're talking Raphael. And Raphael, let's talk about the things you're working on right now and the things that's up and coming for your next? Yes. Well, we the, the main, the two most fundamental thing we're, I'm working right now, as I mentioned earlier, and one is to introduce a Minority Rights Act in Parliament. And the other one is also to introduce a federal government for a uh, division for minorities because... When you look at the uh, the way that the uh, federal government in the U.S. Is, uh, is is established systemically, they do have a similar group for minorities, the uh, minority division, which is part of the uh, federal government. So we are, I am working on those two fundamental projects to bring on to bring about the uh, legislation, and on top of the legislation, because you know when you have a law, you need an institution to enforce the law because if the law doesn't have any enforcement mechanism, it's a dead law. And at time, people will not even remember there is a law that protects their right. So it is important for us. But for now, we do have the status to enforce the law. But when you have uh, the, the proper legislation and the institution, that is constantly promoting and if people have complaints about their rights that are violated, if you have groups that would like, you know, to uh, have uh, grievance and so on and so forth, then you have a mechanism that can enforce their, their, those, those particular laws and assist people in in justice to, to get them to find justice. So this is the main two thing we're working on now. We're making a lot of progress. I do have a couple of lawyers that are donating their time to coach me on, to look at the system, so on and so forth. But those are the main thing to get the law passed. And the law, getting the law passed is easier 
But getting the institution is a little bit more complex because that's when we need the enforcement mechanism. And this is the main, uh, the two fundamental things we're working on right now. Well, Raphael, you know, I, I, I tip my hat to you because it's, 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 it's all about putting in the work. And we all want to ask people to put in the work. And if people ever want to get in contact with you, they can come through the BBM Goldman Network and contact me, and I'll, and I'll push them straight to you. Because it's about putting in the work, and you are putting in the work. And I'd like to say thank you so much. My pleasure. It's a great honor to be on your show. And thank you. So we'll be in contact to catch up with you more on the updates on the things that we can help you with. So we're going to let Raphael go, and we want to thank him for coming on um, Bridges on the BBM Global Network because we have another guest that's around the line, and because it's so early in the morning, I want to get him on, and it's my, fra- it's my friend calling from Israel. David, welcome. Shalom. Shalom. Good evening. Good morning from our part. <laughs> yeah, good morning to you. Good Shalom evening America. to me. Yes. Yes, of so- course. What we're going to talk, we're going to go right into the show about talking with David. And we're, we have always talked to David and I have been in conversation for about, and we talked about what you call safety and human life. But first, let's give us an update of what you're doing in Israel right now, David, so we can get right in. Tell us what you're doing. Well, I am uh, almost 31 years running as a CEO. I founded and I am running as a CEO an organization institute, Security Education Institute, which is called International Security Academy, Israel. We are qualifying and empowering, upgrading four sectors in order to mitigate and overcome violent crimes and terrorism encounters and we try to spread it around and we try to uh, offer it to in various countries uh, honestly to say we are focusing only on foreigners it means the israelis reached it already with all our education systems and our services so the the services which we are offering education and training sharing know-how and practical experience We are doing this with uh, allies, with friendly friendly societies, friendly countries, law enforcement, as yours. Yes, we have very very good experience with uh, with Americans. We we have yes. I know this there's a group of my friends and we have established executive protection group here in the United States and we've done some work and there's a little bit of fractions all over. But when people think of Israel, David, they don't they think of it as a violent place and they don't understand it's not a violent place, it's a place that the citizens, Israelis, really work hard on that living life, and they are there to willing to protect it. You want to talk about that? Because the United States people are sure. – the maj- sure. majority of people do not want to protect their life in that type of idea. So let's talk about that. Sure, of course. This is the formula. That's why we have a, our own formula in order to keep our paradise to continue for us it's paradise. Uh, you are watching TV, you are watching uh, or you are reading newspapers which are feeding you with uh, fake news, fake news reporting you about the picture which they show a picture of, uh, of uh, violence on the street and our streets are the most, the most safe uh, streets in the world, in the world. I do not have, I didn't have, now I am older and my children are older. But we never had a problem of really leading the children to go wherever they want, whenever they want, because the streets are very, very, very safe. And this is, if you compare the amount of uh, casualties from violent crimes, crimes on the streets with us, our violent crime on the streets, which are not, but we do not have, we do not have robbery. We do not have kidnaps. We do not have uh, violent, uh, violence on the street. You compare it to Switzerland, to, 
to Norway, to Sweden, everywhere. They are suffering, but nobody is covering. No, nobody is covering. And if you make a comparison, we are very, very low, 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 low rate of fire, uh, public uh, violence. We have and incidents here... of terror which are close to the borders. Okay. Right. But this is this is not something to avoid. Our paradise to continue, but we we protect it by ourselves. And that's the difference between on the society. Because in the United States, we don't look people collectively, and because this just pockets of people who are working on protecting others. And I'm not talking about the police officers and all the people who who do their jobs. I'm just talking about regular people. I always try to get them. To, to try to get them to train. Just recently, they're doing Thanksgiving. We had mall shootings in Alabama. Um, just recently, two of my friends have been shot and killed. So there's actions to be taken that we as people need to do more of. You listen to Bridges, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul, on the BBM Global Network. We'll be right back. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from France. International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. So welcome back to Bridges, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. And again, tonight's show of the Human Rights Charter is marriage and family. Marriage meaning unity, family meaning together. And again, the bridge that we're talking about is the Peace Bridge. It's connected to the international bridge that actually connects to into Canada, but it's the only bridge that connects that way. Again, when we're talking with David, and David's calling from Israel, and then we have another call in line, and, and when we're talking about executive protection, protecting of people, and protecting people's rights, protecting people's safety, that takes work, not just from the people who know how to do it, but from everyone who is involved. Again, I had friends who just recently shot and killed. For It doesn't matter. It, they're, it's a crime, and it happens. But... Fred, come on in. And we're talking with David, and we're always talking about that protection of people. And David's already talking about that. Like, it's it's about a unity of what the country is doing to be safe. And that's what we have to bring to the United States. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, I missed the first half of your show. I couldn't hear it. But uh, people need to start taking uh, personal security uh you know, everyday life, things have changed. We have to start thinking about being aware of your surroundings all the time. You can't just walk around with your earplugs in your ears and you're looking up at the birds flying. You're going to have to be prepared for anything. Some, You know, in the executive protection business, self-defense, you can always get surprised by anything, but the main thing is try to be aware and be prepared. At least pay to run, get out of sight, look for cover, uh, look after your neighbor, your friends, you know, it's, so the combination of things. 
David, t- yes, I'm here. Yeah. I'm with you. Talk to us all. America, I don't hear you. Oh, Dave, can you hear me now a little better? Yes, yes, but well, now I hear you. Yes, yes, please. Please go on. Let's talk, let's talk about what we're going to bring to you from Israel. Well, first, involvement. Involvement. It is not to dial 911 and they will resolve for us the problems. Most of the incidents, terrorism incidents, which we face here and there, are resolved by involvement of civilians which are prepared, which are aware, involvement. Involvement, solidarity, unity, taking care of what's going on the street, as the, as the, our friend from before wrote to go, and awareness is the most important. We intend to start in 2019 a project which will share know-how and practical expertise with Americans to empower American civilians to an American, uh, any, all genders and all ages, to empower them and to be more involved and more contributing by being empowered, by being, a, a, they believe that they should believe that they can. We protect our life together. We protect our values together. Not any law enforcement to do it for us. That's completely right. And, and Fred, you, you have, I know you have one more comment you want to add to that, but go ahead and then we'll let you go, Fred. Oh, yeah. And that, 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 what he said is, is right, you know, you know, being involved like that. But the thing with it is people have to get out of that attitude uh, the, way, the way they think that it's not going to happen to me. And that's where we get caught with our pants down every time because it's never me. It happens somewhere else. And it could be on your doorstep, so you have to be prepared for any type of altercation that's going to happen in life. Thank you so Bless much, Fred, you. for joining us. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you so much, Fred, for joining us here on Bridges on the Global BBU Global Network. So, David, when we're talking about that next, most people say, am I too old? Am I too this? But there's a mental part to this that people are just not getting also, and I think in the United States. And what is that men- mental preparation that everyone has to learn how to do? The mental preparation starts from the kindergarten, starts from early age of the, of the future civilian. It should be mental and physical empowerment, empowerment process, practical, theoretical, which upgrades self, uh, self-esteem, self-confidence. Well, it starts from self-awareness. What do I do here? Why I am here? And what I should do? And all this uh, uh, qualification, it should be with a guidance, with a guided qualification, practical, mental, but it is security, education, security, awareness, to be able to know how to react in case that all of us are prepared. Not only the army, you have a wonderful army, we have one, you have wonderful society, you have universities, why, no, why not to, uh, to uh, involve such practical trainings, mental and physical empowerment, we call it. We have project, we have education system, not so difficult to do, it is not military, uh, training. It is not military training, but it is practical. Well, any uh, this program we can uh, you everybody can see it on securityacademy.com. www.securityacademy.com. You will see it. You will agree with it. Do it by yourself or uh, use the people which are professional to security education process. Takes time. It is needed to do in any age for any gender. Not to leave it there nine, to die in 911 because as you are involved, you close, your, you put your plugs in the ears and you don't want to see the problems. When you will be involved, nobody will approach you. 
you will not go on the streets and turn your head to avoid from a conflict because if you avoid the conflict, sometimes somebody else will avoid your own involvement in the conflict. So this is a Thank you so much, David. And again, it's about involvement and everyone's talking about the same thing. Even Raphael was talking about the same thing. We're going to take another break and we'll be right back. It shows Bridges and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. Give us a call at 877-475-8570 on the BBM Global Network. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul. Every Monday at the BBM Global Network at 8 p.m., you can catch us here and catch the podcast later on in the week. We've been talking with some people I've having a show, and most of the things we're talking about is getting involved, and that will take away all those violence and the criminal inactivity that's going on. David, you're calling from Israel. We know that you just had bombs. I mean, I personally know you just had bombs coming from Hamas and traveling over there, and you had a raids going on inside the city of Tel, Tel Aviv. But yet you're still keeping such a positive attitude because the people are working together. Just give us that one thing that we as Americans need to really take hold of, and that's why we're bringing this training to the United States. Yes, yes. This is exactly our intention. Since a since, uh, long time, we wanted to share the know-how and practical expertise. We will bring it very, very soon. We will start to publish it, and we will start to train, train the trainer. We will instruct instructors, American instructors, with, uh, just to guide to the right direction. You have the capacities. You know, every, you, know, you know everything, but you do not do it because you are not maybe. Maybe you do not understand that training is the secret. Training and qualification of your people. The liberty is important. Not to be involved, a uh, human rights is important. Everything is important, but guidance, guidance by those which are experienced. That's why we will train the trainer in a project, a huge project for our friends, family, brothers in the USA, which all of you are our allies. allies. We will share know-how by qualifying the people which are already security practitioners with expertise by your own. We will have our expertise, which is dealing with violence and counterterrorism the way we do it and the way we offer it to, be, uh, to, to achieve results, especially in the society. 
is, is a preparing pre permanent preparedness, permanent preparedness, because the 21st century is much more violent as we, we see that the violence is everywhere. Violence from any kind of terror, not Israeli Arab terror. You have other terror. No, do not let nobody terrorize you. Do not let nobody make you a, a victim. And by not preparing, you are preparing to fail. So the preparation which you are doing for school, for teach, yes, this is the idea. And we will share Thank it you. with you as, yes, Yes, thank guys, you. welcome. Uh, I'm going to let you go, show David, and thank you so much. Uh, what David was talking about. Good night, shalom, and toda raba. Talking about is training, like I said, if you fail to train, you fail to prepare. I know Ashley, hold on, Ashley, Miss Ashley. And I know that in, in our living here in the United States, and I've traveled around the world a lot, and I've been training in protection a lot, in defense, emotional defense, emotional health, emotional well-being. There's a lot of things we can do, and I've always constantly said there's a practice. There's a practice to it. There's a practice to the living, not surviving. you got to get away from that. Even Raphael was talking about that earlier. It was about he heard something, and he had to take an, he had to take an action in it. And his action was he formed an organization, and now they've been thriving, creating, closing the economic divide on people of minorities. And then what Dave was calling from Israel, what we're talking about is giving that education. There's some amazing teachers here in the United States. And again, a lot of people keep thinking that I don't need that type of education. We're not asking you to need the education. We're asking you to be prepared for it. And that's the difference. If you don't prepare, then, then, the, then the show like Bridges doesn't ever get you there. It doesn't get you from here to there because you're so locked in of being a victim that there is no outcome to it. And then when your back is pushed up against the wall, then there's an outburst. We don't want outbursts. We want preparedness. If when criminals or people who are unhealthy – know that the majority of people are prepared, things will be better. That's just what it is. Ms. Ashley, are you on the line? I am. I am, Dr. Paul. I am enjoying this. Yes, I am on the line. How are you? <laughs> so how are you doing? Yeah, now, absolutely. I'm fine. You, you Like even coming from Houston and down where you are, where there is a lot of activity that isn't healthy. I don't want to call it criminal. I don't want to call it gangster, whatever. But it's just sometimes there's a lot of well, I call not, it survival. It's a lot yeah. of not. It's a lot of some un uncalled for survival going on in Houston. Let's so call what, it that. What what did you think about what David was talking about, about just training, be prepared? And that's not just physical. There's also the emotional. And we've talked about this before, though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, we talked about this plenty of times. Yeah. You know, it's all. Yeah, it is all about, you know, training. But they need the leaders like us to actually sit and talk and have classes and be able to do these type of events and then make people not only aware that they need just the training we're not asking you to do we ask them we're doing this for your own well-being you know um you know a lot of you know especially our minority they just you know have that slave mentality they don't they don't want nothing if it's new or if it's if it's anything that's not in routine they don't want to do it so it's like and I and that and that's a great statement you said that's slave mentality and now ex please explain that to people what you mean by that slave mentality i cuz you're spot on but explain that when but yeah well it's, it's self explanatory that slave mentality where the the white people that have embedded into negro own the way of life and the way of living is all a lie you don't how have you not supposed to the reason why it's called soul food is not even soul food. Soul food is supposed to be good for your soul. And what the, what you what y'all eating is not, you know, but you used to it because that's all you that's all they gave us. 
you know, so we try to tell you what's, what's you know, what's, what's not to eat, you know, there's a better way. We came from royalty. We came from being kings and queens, not, not you know, animals, you know. That's now, right. And, and also, also that mentality is being to a situation that was forced to, that was forced on you that you didn't know that you could get out of. So not just you, if you're thinking about slave mentality, only slavery or, or people who were enslaved, you can be enslaved mentally, emotionally, and physically if you're locked into a situation exactly. that you don't think you can get out of. So we'll be going to take a break and you listen to Bridges and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. And we're talking to Miss Ashley and Houston. Give us a call 877-475-8570. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul. Give us a call here at 877-475-8570, or you can always contact me throughout the week and give me your inputs and your thoughts. Today's show was about action. Rafael Luis out of Canada talking about the economic and social involvement that he took on since 2002 has made a difference in his country he has made a difference. He's passing bills. He is doing something for not just a certain people, but all people, because it all matters. And then my friend David come calling from Israel, talking about the organization, the, the information we're going, to, the type of training we're bringing back and forth in around the world. And the reason why I called and asked him to come in because I didn't understand most people look at Israel, they think it's a violent place. They have no idea. It's, it's, it's the most beautiful place you could ever have gone. Or go. And it's a collective amount of people. They all work on living. It is not a fear based community of living. It's not like, of course, when we hear it here, we hear about these bombs hitting it and whatever and all this stuff going on. These people are just an amazing, happy people because they work on it. They, They train for it, they practice it. And here in the United States, we seem to take it for granted. Again, like Miss Ashley said, we get caught into that slave mentality of thinking that someone put me here and this is where I'm supposed to be. That is just not true. It takes, it does take work, you know, and Mm -hmm. I know we're on on our last leg of the show for the evening, but Miss Ashley, give us something that people can understand how to get out of that slave thinking of being caged in fear or I can't do freedom. freedom I love it. Freedom. <laughs> you have you have to you have to have baby. If you want true freedom, 
You will wake up in the morning and do something that you are love and that you are that you want to do and make your own money get get out there and make your own money instead of pushing some clock and making somebody else some money they don't even know your name. You just a number to them. It's there's a way it, of another living. It's okay. It's okay to eat healthy. It's okay. Go go. They don't tell you. They tell you not to exercise because they don't want you to actually open up your eyes and feel good and open up your vibrations and accept your true being and your true purpose. You know you don't like getting up every work like that. You know you have dreams. Step out on faith and believe in yourself. The money will come. God gonna make sure you good. It's gonna be ways that you are getting by with not a dime in your pocket, but your bills are paid somehow. It's him. You just be you. It, 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 I, you know, I it's speechless, but it, the word is freedom, but we have freedom. to practice. We have to practice Nina Simone to be free. said it best. Yeah. When she did that video. So. Freedom. We're going to leave you with this one thought. You can join us every Monday. You can listen to any podcast. You can read any type of book you want. You can do anything you can do to better your life. And I hope you do. And I'm, and I'm grateful you do. But here on Bridges, to get you from here to there, to get you to your freedom, I'm telling you now, you have to put in some work. And if you don't know how to put in the work, you can always contact us. And that's what we're here for. We're here to give you that peace from your knowledge to your understanding. We're, here, we're not just here to give you glorified thoughts and sayings. We're here to actually give you that education piece. That's why we're doing these classes across the country. That's why we do this radio show here on Bridges. That's why we do what we do is to give you that freedom. But you have to work for it. Working for it doesn't take sweat. It just takes a heart, emotional, and love. Love yourself, love your community, and love the world. You've been listening to Bridges on the BBM Global Network. You can always catch us on the iHeart and iTunes radio. Until next week, freedom is the word I'm going to leave you with. This has been Bridges with your host, Dr. Paul. Explore new ways to care for yourself and others in order to create a healthier and more vibrant community and world. Here on Bridges with Dr. Paul. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.